Hi folks, hope you're okay today. I just want to share a few thoughts uh, concerning Anthony Flew. Uh, I just read a, a paper by Peter S. Williams called A Change of Mind for Anthony Flew, www.arn.org, docs, William, pw, Anthony Flew, dot, htm. So this is the source of my article. Um, and uh, Flew in his book, um, the reference is, uh, <coughs> excuse me, is a reference 22 of um, <coughs> Peter S. Williams. <coughs> but uh, Williams says, following up on the Vagis connection through more light on Flew's thinking, in his review of Vagis' book, Flew refers to a point made in an introduction for a possible new and final edition of my God and Philosophy. <coughs> Flew says, first, a substantial case of agreement. Richard Dawkins has famously asserted that natural selection, the blind automatic process which Darwin has discovered, we now know is the explanation for the existence and apparently purposeful form of life. Against that claim, I pointed out after quoting a significant sentence on the 14th and final chapter of the origin of species that one place where until a satisfactory naturalistic explanation has been developed there would appear to be room for an argument to design is at the first emergence of living from non-living matter and unless that first living matter already possessed the capacity to produce itself genetically there will still be room for a second argument to design until a satisfactory explanation is found for its acquisition of that capacity you have in your book deployed abundant evidence indicating that it is likely be, to be a very long time before such naturalistic explanations are developed, even if there would be. He goes on, our disagreement begins with any shift from the God of natural theology to the God of revelation. For the writings of Aristotle, with ultimately supplied Aquinas with most of his arguments for the existence of his God, contain no definition of the word God and no concept of an omniscient and omnipotent personal being unceasingly observed human thought and human conduct, much less a concept of a being demanding our obedience and threatening us with an eternity of extreme torture for what he insists on perceiving as our unnecessated and unforgiven disobedience. So the five Aristotelian arguments which Aquinas famously offered as proofs of the existence of Christian God are surely today more appropriately to be seen as arguments for the existence of Spinoza's deistic God of nature, who of which leaves nature and its creatures, including its human creatures, entirely to their own devices. The nearest which Aristotle ever came to the God or gods of Christianity or Islam was when the, Nic the Nicomian ethics in 10.18.8, he argued that if it's generally believed not God but the gods exercise some superintendence over human affairs hi mark hi jay you're all right yeah yeah i've just i've just i'm just live on youtube doing anthony flu <laughs> all right <laughs> do you want me to call you back no, no, it's all, it'll only be a couple of minutes. You can all just, right, I'll listen it. Go on, then. I'll listen it. You can just chip in. And, how are you doing? You okay? I'm good, yeah. Good. I try, I've tried to contact you, uh, to, I think yesterday or today, I don't know. To see if you're okay. Yeah. Uh, I've just read, I've just talked about Anthony Flew. All right. And um, he changed from being a, a, an atheist to a, a deist because uh, he looked at, the origin of life and thought that there couldn't be any naturalistic explanation that the complexity of DNA yeah uh, produce could have only come from some kind of God but he didn't believe that he believed that God existed but not he didn't think it was a Christian God he didn't think this God was good but he couldn't deny that DNA was showing information and this information implied a mind giver so I'm just going to play a little interview that he had for a few minutes and then you could tell us what you think. Oh, go on then. It's 
coming on in a minute. It's good to see you anyway, bro. Good to see you, Jeff. Ian, uh, yeah, the integrated complexity argument. Now, when you talk about the integrated complexity, yeah. is it the the um, unlikelihood of that developing naturalistically, the first complex integrated biological system? Is that where the problem you saw? Uh, well, yes, because after all, uh, there is a problem about uh, even well, the, the, the physical nature. There's a, you know, it's if the integrated complexity of the physical world is a good reason, as Einstein clearly thought it was, of believing that there was an intelligence behind it, then uh, this arg argument applies a fortiori with the inordinately greater integrated complexity of the living world. Mm -hmm. and it seems to me is, this is just obvious that it, the, that argument is much stronger now. And this was one of the factors that led you to conclude there must be an intelligence. Yeah, yeah. It, it was uh, uh, th accepting uh, Einstein, who after all was the person who was qualified to judge, and seeing that a fortiori this applied, uh, where of course Einstein didn't uh, have any authority at all and wasn't inclined reason enough to talk about it. What do you think, Mark? Just I'll play, I'll play a bit more in a minute. Should we, can we go on for a few minutes with it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. What, what did you think of that? I think it was great. You know, I know, um, I remember reading, uh, watching an interview with uh, Richard Dawkins, you know. Yeah. And he had totally respect for Andrew Flew. Yeah. And he was absolutely flabbergasted how he's uh, how he turned from belief, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because I know he was like really that respect, wasn't he? It was like he was he was really was like Dawkins, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. With his, his same kind of uh, same kind of uh, mindset, but um, yeah, it just goes it goes back to this intelligence in design, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And you can't, you can't, you can't uh, escape from it. So, but it's only like one, it's one step, isn't it? You know, it's like um, a deist may believe in God. Yeah. But it's not enough just to believe in God. You, the next question is, well, what kind of God? Yeah, yeah. And that's where Christianity comes in because, you know, God is a revealing God. He's revealed himself fully through Christ. And uh, obviously through the scriptures as well. So natural theology can only take you so far. Natural nature can tell you there is a God. Yeah. But it can only tell. It, it, it can only. Um, it can't tell you much about his character mm, mm. or his attributes. That's where we need scripture. Mm. And uh, because God, God is a revealing God. Mm. So yeah, so I think of that. I, I I agree I agree to a part, but I I think that um, I, I don't know what you think, but like if like he's saying that he believes that DNA shows information and this information implies a mind, yeah, and so he believes there is a God. But then he goes on to say, if you read the paper, there's a paper by um, uh, uh peter s williams a change of mind for anthony flew is a christian philosopher and he just Ooh. notes that anthony flew says that he and we'll get on to it in a second that god is is not good he, uh, who says who says that Jay? anthony flew he believes there is a god right if you look at information information mm. shows a mind and he thinks that must be a god but he believes if there is a god he's not good because of the problem of evil but yeah i and i agree with you that we can't know god through unless god has revealed himself but i think that if if dna shows information then it shows there is a, a mind a, like a mind behind that then a mind doesn't a mind imply person uh personhood yeah and if there's personhood doesn't 
don't ideas about personhood go with that as well like um couldn't you couldn't you deduce that if if like dna shows information and then information implies a mind which implies personhood then if you go back to the dna couldn't you imply that there, there is goodness is that the kids yeah that the, <laughs> Keep going, Jay. That there is goodness within that structure, and that implies a good God. Like you could apply personal things about God from 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 that structure, or is that going too far? Uh, do you know what? It's I'm reading this book here. You know, that's why I phoned you up. It's by C W R. Uh, you know, do you ever sell the news wrote every day for Jesus? Yeah, yeah. But it's a book on there how they do counseling and stuff, you know. Yeah. And he talked about uh, the image of God. And he basically said, um, he's, he's talking about um, everyone's, he basically said, he basically talked about beliefs, worldviews, right? Yeah. And he says, your worldview, your belief shapes your behavior. Wow. Yeah. Right. So he's talking about, the mind in our minds right yeah people have an, an image of god in their minds and um he talks about to get an image a correct Im image of god to know what it is to be made in the image of god we've got to look at god in the scripture um right but i'm just thinking about that scripture just but i mean I don't even think you have to debate all of this thing. I mean, the, the Bible says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can argue it from Scripture. Yeah, people people know there is a God through nature. Yeah. And their conscience. Well, I'm trying to go for what Scripture says. The Scripture says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Yeah, I told you. Whether, 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 whether you believe that or not, it's another thing. Yeah, I agree. You know, so, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. But when you... When you agree there is a God, you've got to find out what kind of God that is. Because you can't figure it out in your own head. Because, like you said, people make an image of God from their own idea. Yeah, yeah. You know. And in this book here, he's talking about um, um, things that shape our view of God. And he, he says this, he says, um, what does influence... What do, 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 um, he says? Um, he says usually there is no single thing that shapes the development of our understanding of God, hmm. because God exists outside the capacity of our normal senses. Our God concept is the result of a number of important factors. It is to some of the most. It is to some of the most insignificant. It, it, sorry, I'm getting tongue twisted. It is to some. Of the most significant of these factors that we now turn our attention what does influence the formation of our minds in other words what influences our image of god and he talks about uh, these things develop our image of god right mm -hmm. he say he says to de the degree to which god's nature was accurately modeled by those who nurtured us and he says this um Suppose a youth leader is talking to a group of 12-year-olds about how God treats us like a father. One child has experienced a warm and caring family and a dad who was both loving and interested in their life experiences. Another child has endured bitter fighting between her parents all her childhood and she has had to watch her father beating her mother frequently, resulting in her being in a state of trembling fear on those rare occasions when the family is together. Yeah. Clearly, there will be very different images remembered and concepts formed when God is described as father for the two girls. Yeah. Healthy concepts of the nature of God through the modelling and incidental teaching by significant adults such as parents is one element that shapes the level of accurate understanding of God's character and nature. So I would ask to, I would go back to Andrew, Andrew Flew, Anthony Flew, sorry, when he talks about God being... Um, cruel or whatever i would like to ask pride with what he was how he understood yeah. from as a child you don't yeah. get. 
Not what you don't and then he says own. other things that are, are, are our reflection on life experience to shape our image of God. Uh -huh. uh, the teachings that we have received in school and are from people we trusted. Mm. Our understanding of the scriptures, our personal walk with God, uh, oh, experiences where God has intervened in our lives, and uh, any doubts or confusion we may be experiencing in relation to our faith. And he talks about our uh, image of God being under construction mm. constantly. What? Oh, sorry. I'll have to go, Jason. Claire's calling me. All right. Mate. Thanks a lot, bro. But he talks about under construction. He's talking about how uh, we grow in our relationship with God. Yeah, it's brilliant. So, it's brilliant, mate. I'm going to have to set the chair. I'll get back to you, Jay. All right, give us a ring if you want to come back. Yeah, take care. Mate. All right, all right I've got a book here, Jason. Yeah, that I want to share on some Google Hangouts on all on addiction. Awesome, yeah, which is good. So I'll get all back right. to you. All right, take care, bro. See you later. See Bye. Later. Love to everyone. Yeah. Bye. Okay, that was a friend of mine um, who was sharing, but uh, he has to set the table and do family duties. So we'll listen to a bit more of Anthony Flew. What qualities would you say that intelligence reflects or has? In other words, is this a omniscient intelligence? Is it a um, omnipotent intelligence? What uh, qualities would you ascribe to it? Well, you'd have to sub uh, subscribe on the omnipotence if it was going to do anything. And uh, I don't think one's entitled to infer anything else. Above all, one's not entitled to infer uh, that it, it is like the God of Islam, very eager to conquer the world. What about eternality or uh, the eternal nature with, with this? With this I should have thought so, because, <coughs> I mean, to be omnipotent and uh, not doing anything, would, uh, and yet uh, uh, to uh, exercise your om omnipotence and then sort of really rub your hands and say, that's that, and go away, <laughs> uh, it looks to me as if you can't really separate the eternity from the omnipotence so if we're saying this this is an omnipotent um intelligent mm. um eternal yeah um omniscient I those think, those those qualities you'd certainly i think i think with. that's right yes but what about personal is this a personal force or being yes. well you're suggesting uh, activity <sighs> it's very hard to think of a conscience uh, a, a, a con um, a conscious omnipotence mm. do anything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so if, if so if, if if this being is doing something then it must be personal in some sense i i should have thought that so but um uh, this is completely new to me i haven't mm -hmm. even begun to think about this book that i am certainly yeah. not going to attempt to write <laughs> we're going to get you to write it oh no no <laughs> you're not <laughs> So, so we have a powerful, intelligent, eternal, um, would you call this a being? I think so, yes. A being who um, may or may not be personal in the sense of conscious, mm. or would he be? I think he's got to be conscious okay. if he's going to be an agent. Okay. You know, we're producing... I, I hope I'll see the script of this <laughs> sometime. You're thinking about it as we go. Well, something. yes. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to write the book, but I'm, I mean, I'm very interested in what we're talking about.
think the interview shows that he he was actually not a deist. He'd actually move away from even deism there. But his book seems to imply from the Professor Williams um, that he was a deist. Um, but I think in the interview, he's made all the right conclusions. Um, he must have shrunk back from some of those conclusions in his writings. Um, but I find it very interesting that uh, looking at intelligence within information within DNA, he, he's gathered that there is a mind. And from the mind, he's come to certain conclusions about the nature of God, all from natural theology. Uh, I think because of academic peer pressure, when he came to write his book, he's minimized it, tried to uh, justify his um, shift from atheism to some kind of theism um, on a philosophical base where he, he is not uh, seen to have gone all the way. But in this interview, it certainly seems that when he's being pressed, uh, he's moving. He's move, He moved in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. If if this is this being knowable by us, do you think? Well, um, we are presumably thinking that we know of his existence. And as there doesn't seem to be anything else to know about him other than what we've suggested, um, we've apparently got all the knowledge of this being um, that's going to be available. Would this, would your view of this being be a deistic kind of view that uh, he's not involved in human affairs? Oh, emphatically, yes, yes. I don't see why there's any reason. Uh, for him to be discontented in any way with uh, what he's already produced, mm. human beings as they are. But There's a contradiction there within Anthony Flew's position um, that he thinks God is personal, yet God is not involved in the affairs of human beings. Uh, in his book, it seems to imply that he doesn't believe God is good, and yet, he is implying here that God is perfect in his creation, so, or at least satisfied in his creation. So, even if he sees God as satisfied, that's not really deism, is it? It's still theism, but in a different way. To be, as it were, thinking, now we can get on with the real bu uh, business of converting them to some religion or punishing them for not following. You know, the whole idea of this being uh, 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 thinking, well, the whole point of creating a universe is, in the case of Islam, is um, to have the satisfaction of torturing some of its members forever. But then, as I say, I have no respect for islam as a system of thought after all whereas uh, christianity had uh, two things uh, a first-rate philosophical intellect in saint paul knowing all the relevant languages and all the things about the ancient world and the ancient civilization and the defining instance of a charismatic figure in jesus christ I think that's amazing. Oh, that is absolutely awesome. Did you hear that? He didn't think any much of Islam, but he thought much of the Apostle Paul and the Lord Jesus Christ. That's truly amazing. But he didn't go on to believe. It just shows you that you do need the scriptures to convert you, to get you to see the truth. Now, it seems to me that this being created all that is but uh you seem to be going a step further because you're saying that the com the integrated complexity of organisms is evidence perhaps of the this intelligence so yeah. he didn't just create the universe but he was also been involved in the creation of life oh yeah so you perhaps go further than a pure deist who might say he created 
and then walked away. He was involved later in creating life after the creation of the universe. Well, he, he created a universe that was going to develop in a certain way. Mm. But it doesn't mean that he is going to be interested in anything thereafter. What we're postulating him to explain uh, is the creation of the whole shoot as we know. Why would God create something and not be interested in it? That doesn't make sense. All right, and I start to get there following Einstein with the, the basic physical world, mm -hmm. but presumably uh, the being in question would have thought of the whole shoot. Mm -hmm. does, is, does this being, do you think, I'm speculating. It's, it's end. Mm -hmm. if it, it, presumably it is bound to have an end, isn't it? There'll be... Uh, uh, energy will be exhausted. Do, do you think? Do you think the fact that this being created, for whatever purpose, a ha a suitable habitat for humankind, does that indicate at all a sense of caring? Well, I think uh, if we were involved in a discussion for the this book that would have to be considered yes i think that it's a reasonable thing for someone to argue that doesn't mean it's the right but it's, yeah. it's certainly right for someone to say that that would, yeah i think yeah. and that is in fact what uh, theists would want to say in some way wouldn't it that the whole purpose of this creation was to produce believers yeah uh, you mentioned Jesus a, a little while ago. Um, who, who, how do you view him? Who was he? How do you view him? I don't think I have any any view of, of this. You know, I think this is a defining case of a charismatic figure. And if one were engaged in a study of charismatic figures, this one would be uh, compared with the major figures in other religions so he sees jesus as a charismatic figure so what we're seeing here is a philosopher who's thinking about nature and dna coming to the conclusion that there is a god of intelligence and consciousness um perhaps even personal but a god who is not interested in creation and jesus being a charismatic figure so what we're seeing here is that philosophy can only take you so far that he would need to allow the scripture to impact him and allow him to uh, to help him to see who Jesus really is the son of God and uh, who rose from the dead now you said in 2004 that you hope that there's no afterlife yes w w why because I don't want to go on forever, and a fortiori, I do not want to be tortured eternally. Now, a Christian would say that you wouldn't have to be, that that if, if you take that step to say, I believe in this deity, it makes the miraculous more possible, there is historical data for the resurrection, and you, I mean, according to Christian teachings, mm. that uh, someone who receives Christ as their forgiver and leader, it doesn't have to worry about eternity. Uh, no, but I still don't want it. Really? No. Even if there were a heaven? Well, I depend rather on what the activities were. But if the activities were simply uh, praising God and uh, things of that sort, I am not very, very, a continuous. Um, service even the continue as i'm totally unmusical the idea of uh, uh, my father-in-law i think would have been uh, very happy about an inter eternity of first-rate music so what is the point of coming to a conclusion there is a god but yet you wouldn't want to spend time with this god it shows you that philosophy can only take you so far if if the christian god exists Mm -hmm. What would he have to do to convince you of that? Um, I 
I don't know. After all, I've never thought about this at all. And <laughs> I'm not uh, eager to start. Um, he, he would presumably know. <laughs> he would know what it would take. <laughs> yes, presumably. Yeah. I mean, Bertrand Russell, I think, said uh, there's a lack of evidence. But you found enough to believe that there is an intelligence of some sort. Yes. Um, so you've come further than he did. Yes. Um, but uh, circumstances have come uh, yeah. further. New science, the, new scientific yeah, yes. discoveries. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's been a gigantic advance in the sciences since the death of Bertrand Russell. Yeah, no question, especially in this area. Uh, what reaction have you gotten from atheists when you announced your change in view? Um, I haven't been much worried about what reactions I <laughs> got from them. Um, I would have no doubt been aware of more reaction if I was a devoted follower of the internet, but mm. as I am not. Yeah. Uh, I just don't care. And what's your reception been on, by Christians? Well, I, I don't know that uh, there's been much question of reception. After mm -hmm. all, what have I been uh, uh, doing which would involve me in a reception by Christians? Mm -hmm. I think most Christians who truly care about other people would say here we have a great intellect who was uh, known as um, one of the great spokespeople for atheism in history and yet he's come to a new conclusion based on the evidence that he yes. pursued that there is this this entity this that we talked about this being um for christians who know you and care about you they would say they would see this as perhaps a step on a road oh, yes. that might bring you to faith in in jesus yes absolutely and out of concern for you and love for you and and friendship for you people would feel that um and i know you are aware of that i'm sure oh yes yeah what would you say to them uh I, 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 uh, I, it, it hasn't actually happened. I'll have to think about uh, what I say if they do say something. I do like Anthony Blue. He's a lovely guy, even though I disagree with him. He, uh, he's one of the great, one of the great minds of the twentieth century, wasn't he? And uh, a lovely guy. He, um, but sad, really, that he was able to work out from nature that there was a God of some kind, but wasn't willing to move forward to hear what the scriptures actually said. Uh, but it dovetails into the debate that we've been having over the last few weeks on um, DNA and the complexity of DNA and how that speaks of a God. And so Romans chapter one, it says, for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. So the Apostle Paul is right. Over 2,000 years ago, Paul wrote those words, and they came true in Antony Flew, and that is incredible. Even one of the great atheist philosophers of all time gave an analysis of DNA and saw information and saw that would that it had to be created by a mind, and it led him to the, to the conclusion there was a God, and he didn't go to the Christian God, but he believed there was some God. And that is exactly what the Apostle Paul says. He says, he said that the, in, that the invisible things of God, his eternal power and Godhead can be seen within creation. And Antiflu, Anthony Flew saw that. So you should be encouraged as a Christian today that, that there is evidence for God. And... It might be argued that 
well, this evidence from DNA doesn't necessarily point to a Christian God. But because there is evidence there and it does point to a God, it leaves mm, the door open for many discussions and debates about the nature of this God, about how it relates to the DNA evidence. And what it certainly does do is it puts the skeptic on the back foot and it makes them really think or it should make them really think and i think that's why a lot of atheists are not really engaging on this topic of dna and information about dna uh, matt ridley says life is digital information bernard olaf coppers the problem of the origin of life is clearly basically equivalent to the problem of the origin of biological information Manfred Eigen, our task is to find a logarithm, a natural law that leads to the origin of information. Leonard Brebrillian, a machine does not create any new information, but it performs a very valuable transformation of known information. There's information in the DNA that reveals a mind. The mind points to the existence of God. If this God has a mind, the minds are personal, and this is a pointer to the Christian God, who is a personal God and a creator. Let's hear what Anthony Flew has to say, and we'll finish. I mean, you know that people are praying for you, I would guess. And I expect so, yes. Yeah, yeah. Does that bother you, or concern you, or well, I, trouble you? No, I don't. it's not a matter I think about. You know, after all, it's, it's not something you notice. Yeah. <laughs> video is Anthony Flew on God and Atheism, ID Quest, and uh, 11th of February 2013. So please subscribe to them, check out their videos and the work that they're doing. Uh, the article uh, as a basis for discussion is a change of mind for Anthony Flew. Peter S. William W. dot A N A R N dot org docs William P W Anthony Flu H T M. A helpful article to discuss and think about atheism by Anthony Flu is the presumption of atheism by Anthony Flu Anthony Flu PDF um, on con common sense atheism dot com. And there you'll see a, a, an excellent article written by Anthony Flew about atheism, the definition of atheism, etc. So I hope this has been a blessing to you and uh, help you to think through uh, this issue. And um, it, it, it's interesting that uh, quite a lot of atheists are moving away from atheism to deism because they see they do see evidence uh, of God in nature. Uh, and I would encourage you who are an atheist who's moving away from atheism to also read your Bible, read the Gospels, read about the life of Jesus, read a chapter of the Gospel of John each day and see where this leads you. Thank you for listening and take care. God bless.